Thanks for coming out and watching the oxymoronic Reddit professional show, where I showcase the best and worst of the internet. Here I comment on brilliant and hilarious comment chains regarding dumb shit on the internet for you to enjoy. Make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell button so that you get notifications every time we come up with a new video. Enjoy this week's show. Bill Gates said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real life example of this? I knew a guy who had a low-level data slash reporting job. He had several daily slash weekly work responsibilities, including a bunch of reports that needed quite a bit of tweaking from raw data to finished product. But like I said, low level. We didn't find out until way later, but he had set up macros for each of his major responsibilities where he could. Once set up, he'd just run the macros to do his work, but then he'd, smartly, hold off on delivering the reports until just a little before the deadlines. He'd hit every assignment and was seen as reliable. He also would complain about the workload so people would leave him with that work. I doubt he did a full hour of work a day after he set up what he did. Eventually he left the job for one with better pay. But damn did he work lazy. Also, he was smart not to reveal until the end, because had he told them about it he would have gotten a pat on the back and would have been given a whole other workload, on top of maintaining those macros slash etc. Dude milked the job, not the other way around. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry, which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheet and formatting into a report. The person originally doing this job spent a full 40 plus hours slash week doing it, but was not very computer literate. When they retired, the company hired someone with actual skills. The new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted save the 10 to 15 minutes weekly to run their program and to answer the odd email here and there. All while getting paid full salary and benefits. They actually had to add in a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry, which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheet and formatting into a report. I've worked a few places that have people doing this. Usually when they retire, the job is given to some younger person that figures out how to do it in 10 minutes on top of the rest of their normal job. In this case, since the retiring person worked full-time doing this and often struggled to meet deadlines they hired a replacement. I worked goods in for an aircraft manufacturer as a summer job at university. Parts would arrive, we'd open them and key in all the details into a terminal. That bit was long-winded. I discovered the terminal keyboard has assignable shortcuts, and set up a bunch of them for all the boilerplate such that keying in an item was about 6 keystrokes. Saved myself and my workmate hours every day, which we would spend pranking each other, other warehouse staff and staff at other sites. Every year in the Canadian winter, power lines would fail due to the weight of the snow. It took many days to build up enough to break a line so they employed a team to walk the routes and shake the poles to loosen the snow. One day they saw a bear shaking the poles and realized that if they could get the bear to do it they wouldn't need to walk the route. So they gave one guy a bucket of honey and he'd walk the route painting the sides of the poles with honey to attract the bears. It worked for a few more years but this still takes a lot of time to do. So then they had the idea of flying a helicopter along the route with a trained sniper with honey paintballs that he'd shoot the poles with. On its maiden flight the helicopter passed the lines and the downdraft blew away all of the snow. The flights continue to this day but without the sniper. My ex-boss gave me an Excel sheet. 124.000 rows Excel sheet. Had all the company customer data per row, twice. In some of those duplicates there was an error. She needed me to go over the list one row by row to check for mistakes and mark all the faulty entries I could find. Through 124.000 rows. She wanted me to do that using the arrow down key in my mouse. I thanked her. I sat down. Invested half an hour into Google. Copy-pasted some parts of this formula, then some parts of that. Finally I had figured out the formula. I double-clicked the tiny rectangle so that the formula gets applied on all rows. Worked like a charm. I stood up, got myself a coffee, talked to some colleagues. Then I went to my boss. She had anticipated that I would need three days for this task. When I was back less than an hour later, she thought I hadn't understood the task or maybe a follow-up question. I will never forget the expression on her face when I told her I was done. There were six faulty entries. A year and a half later I enrolled into computer science at university where I will finish my undergrad this summer. I don't know if this is a true story, but kind of fits your request. There was a manufacturing plant that made toothpaste. 
One year for some reason there ended up being an unusually high number of empty boxes being shipped out. So in order to stop that from happening the head of the company hired a couple engineers to develop a system to catch any empty boxes so they didn't get shipped with the boxes that actually had the toothpaste tubes in them. The engineers developed a system that if the box weighed below a certain amount the system would stop and a worker would have to go remove the box and start everything up again. The person in charge loved the idea and implemented it immediately. And right from the get-go the number of empty boxes shipped dropped to near zero. The head of the company wanted to go see the system in action so he goes and visits the plant one day and notices a huge fan right by the assembly line. Very confused as it wasn't hot he asked the plant manager why the fan was there. The plant manager said the workers were tired of stopping what they were doing to remove an empty box so they just hooked up a fan to blow the empty boxes off the scale before the system recognized it was empty and shut everything off. So laziness led to a more efficient, and cost-effective, plan. One of my favorite stories from my youth was, the tale of the man who was too lazy to fail. I got fed up with handwriting itemized suborders at work, so I set up a spreadsheet that you can just fill out. Then I got tired of having more than one program open, and not being able to search within and among those order sheets, at least not automatically, or easily, so I'm having our FileMaker guy integrated into our greater ordering and invoicing system. I was frustrated at the pointlessness of sorting a giant pile of paper invoices from an unpaid stack to a paid stack every month, so I just used the accounting software to keep track. I became so irritated with having to fill out a multi-page, printed spreadsheet for every single order, sometimes just one item, two pages in, and frequently, there would be those pesky itemized sub-orders that I condensed the items into most used, put them all on one easy-to-read sheet, and encouraged my coworker to simply write out the more uncommon items at the bottom. Basically, I hate busy work, and paper invariably leads to busy work. I have tried to reduce the use of paper in our office, but have not been entirely successful. We have to have written order forms available, because sometimes the orders are coming in too fast to be able to type it all quickly and correctly, and have to keep some paper records for things like organic, FDA, and USDA audits, but all in all I'd say my absolute hatred of filing has reduced busy work here by at least half. When Carl Friedrich Gauss, the famous German mathematician and physicist was in elementary school, around 1784, his class was assigned the busy work task of adding all the numbers from 1 to 100, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. This usually kept the class quiet for half an hour or so. Seven-year-old Carl was sitting quietly with the correct answer, 5050, while the rest of the class was just starting, so the surprised teacher asked him how he came up with the solution. He replied that he added 1 and 100 and got 101. Then he added 2 and 99, and got 101, 3 plus 98 equals 101, and so on. He realized there was a pattern of 50 pairs of numbers with each pair adding up to 101. And 50 x 101 equals 5050. I wish I had this gift to be inquisitive about number patterns. I don't trust or follow my instincts enough in maths. My girlfriend will kill me for this but f it. I hate taking a finished toilet paper roll downstairs to throw it out. Me just leaving the empty roll in the bathroom annoys the crap out of my girlfriend so I developed this strategy when there was only a few sheets left, I'd start using sheets from a new roll and leave the old roll with sheets still on it. That way, she'd always be the one to finish the roll and have to take the empty one downstairs. When Peter the Great was building St. Petersburg there was a huge boulder needed removing as it was in the way of a road. Lots of contractors tendered for the job. The would use explosives to start, smash it into smaller pieces using sledgehammers and then cart them away. A local peasant also put in an offer for half the price. They gave him the job. He and a few friends dug a large hole next to it, took away the excess earth, tipped the boulder in and covered it up with the remaining earth. How long did he take? Digging a hole is a crazy expensive task in civil engineering for what it is. I can only imagine what it must be like without an excavator, or knowing what's under the ground. What if he hit more rocks? And moving a ton of earth isn't that much easier than a ton of rock. Really all he did was replace breaking up the rock with digging a hole. I have a massive exercise to do at our year end, accountancy. My work previously got checked by another manager who spent over three weeks going over the data. Eventually she got shifted to another department and that workload fell on me, basically self-audit and then present the data to the actual auditors. My previous manager was absolutely shit at Excel. I didn't let on but I did all the audit on a separate file using simple, but out of the way, formulas. Not only did I reduce the task from three weeks to basically real-time checks, no time, but when I was told that I have to perform that exercise every month my job became a doddle. I didn't let on that everything was automated by SUMIFs, indexing, max values and range checks. Living the dream. Sorry if I rambled on. 
I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket and when we had to fill the milk cooler people would bust open a 12 pack of milk cartons and put them in one by one. On my first day I just placed the 12 pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter and yanked it from under it and the look of the store manager and the other employee who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day everyone did it my way. At work, I go through parts and apply two different kinds or tape and two different kinds of weave. I have finally got the rhythm down and now I do each part individually and apply everything at once. Everyone else goes through an entire order, just applying tape, then goes through it again to do the weave. I ask to use the big table in the back of the shop and just put all the tape and weave tools there and do the parts all at once. Normal rate for an 8 hour shift is 1200, but I can manage 1800 in a day, going at a nice steady pace. I can get 1,800 going at a steady pace. I've done it before, but I usually don't. Most days I go slow and relax, purposely only making 1,300 to 1,350 or so parts. It's just enough over rate to get my incentive bonus. And, thanks to being a hard and fast worker, the uppers leave me alone at my big table in the back. They look the other way when I have an earbud in one ear, and they don't notice that I scroll Reddit or read a lot. If you enjoyed this week's effective way to waste time, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. If you're enjoying the series, leave me a comment below. A special shout out to the content creators. You frickin' rock.